Greetings from Sri Lanka. And uh, thank you for that very kind introduction and also for giving this opportunity for the Sri Lanka Medical Association. So today I'll be discussing about the Central Asian Regional Perspective and the realities and challenges. And uh, during this presentation, first I'll be providing a brief overview about the current situation in the CMA Central Asian region then uh, moving into my more familiar territory of the Sri Lankan situation and also the contribution of a uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association related to COVID-19 situation as well as the HRS situation related to that. If you take the CMA Central Asian region, the main countries are India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. And uh, if you think about the current perspective that we are discussing about the human resources in here. Most countries in the region, apart from my home country, Sri Lanka, all other countries, including India, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, have been identified as having critical shortages in health workers, and also with high population densities and low GDPs. So all these issues are very much uh, unique to this region. So we have to discuss or maintain our discussion based on this context. If you take country by country, the COVID-19 situation, Bangladesh, there's population of 162 million and per capita expenditure on health is 88 US dollars per person. And the number of COVID-19 cases so far is over 300,000 with over 4,000 deaths which is pretty high. However, India is much more than that with a huge population of 1.3 billion and per capita expenditure $267 on health. The number of COVID-19 cases cumulative is over 3 million. And sometimes there are days that over 70,000 patients are detected. So it's very high. And the cumulative number of COVID-19 deaths is over 66,000. So very high numbers in this region. Pakistan, total population 193 million with per capita expenditure with $129 and over 200,000 cases and no 600,000 deaths. Let's look at Sri Lanka. A beautiful country in the middle of the Indian Ocean, very much similar to Caribbean's. Let's look at the figures. You might see a difference here. A population of 20 million with per capita expenditure of 389. And the cumulative number of cases from January is 3,000, only 3,000. And with only deaths, 12 deaths so far. And the current number of active cases is just over 200. So these are starkly contrasting figures. And let's see what were the actions that have been taken especially by uh, the respective national medical associations. If you take Indian Medical Association, they have been very active and a lot of focus on capacity building of health professionals and collaborative work and also a lot of advocacy work related and contacting the top levels. Pakistan, again, the Medical Association has been very active related to the capacity building of health professionals and collaborating with other medical professional organizations and other health professionals. And a lot of activities has happened with branches of association of the Pakistan Medical Association. And if you take Bangladesh Medical Association, they have expressed their serious concerns about the number of deaths among medical doctors and other health professionals. If you take Sri Lanka's COVID response, there are a lot of things that has not been noticed by many other countries. However, worthwhile study. It's characterized by early action and collaborative approaches with all the different stakeholders, including government, medical, non-medical, security, law enforcement. And there is very strong focus on public health approach. And that has been hallmark of Sri Lankan health system with a lot of focus on public health interventions. And the Sri Lankan approach is characterized by the trace, test and treat. That is, you identify and contact tracing first, and then after contact tracing, 
testing. Therefore, we can avoid the time lost if you go only for testing first. And another unique aspect is everyone who has been tested positive are been admitted and treated. In that way, we can prevent the spread into community. So this approach probably explains the lower numbers that Sri Lanka is having. And use of technology, especially the GRS technology as well as mobile technology to identify the contacts and very aggressive contact tracing through the primary care approach as well as through the military and strong focus on health empowerment. We have tried to summarize this approach in a diagrammatic way. For example, for the community, three C's, that is cleaning hands, covering the mouth and nose, and avoiding crowded places. For the government, legal enforcement, leadership, and the legislation. And for the COVID-19 frontline of health professions and healthcare workers, trace, test, treat approach. So this is actually the time-tested approach that Sri Lanka has been followed and probably a worthwhile case study. And I would like to mention a little bit more about the role of Sri Lanka Medical Association, which has been very unique. Sri Lanka Medical Association is one of the oldest medical professional associations in the Commonwealth with 133 years old. And from the very beginning, SLME has taken a lead role related to areas of advocacy role, capacity building of health professionals, as well as increasing awareness among general public. What were the approaches? Even before the first Sri Lankan patient was detected on 30th of January, on 27th of January, we started our first seminar on COVID-19. During that time, not much was known. You can see there was a huge response. The auditorium was completely filled. And that was the first exposure to the Sri Lankan doctors regarding COVID-19. And a lot of experts related to the infectious diseases, virology, they discussed and planned out the methodology and the way forward as early as January. And from there onwards, SLMA came out with a 10-point approach for the management of COVID-19 in Sri Lanka that is based on the 3T, 3C and 3L approach. And with our public health experts, we were able to come out with a mathematical projection model which provided accurate numbers and helped planning of the human resources management as well as the management of other resources based on the numbers that were expected. And this mathematical model was predicted and proved to be very accurate during the early phase of the epidemic in Sri Lanka. And we have worked in very close collaboration with the Ministry of Health in planning and coming out guidelines related to referrals, patient identification, and patient management. And a lot of expert advice was given. For example, there was one time point where there was a lot of push for rapid antibody testing. Again, Sri Lankan Medical Association came up with a guideline that the best approach would be going for the RT-PCR testing. And from that point onwards, in, the, in Sri Lanka, the number of RT-PCR testing was increased and the testing was used extensively. During the lockdown period, which was implemented very early, as early as March, uh, SLM, Sri Lanka Medical Association, started telemedicine service. We are in partnership with a, with a mobile company. The access to doctors was provided for the patients free of charge. So this was another aspect addressing the human resource angle where the accessibility of primary care was very difficult during the lockdown period. And we have worked in very close collaboration with the World Health Organization, conducted several field level programs. And with the Asia Pacific Academic Consortium of Public Health, the leading public health organization in the region. And during March, we have conducted an expert consortium uh, conference related to COVID-19 with the participation of a lot of experts. And the news magazine of SLMA focusing a lot on capacity building have dedicated several volumes from as early as February. The February issue was focusing on COVID-19 
with lot of material that was unknown not not clear during that time period related to virology as well as preventive measures again mind you this was as early as february and since then we have been focusing lot on capacity building not only through our news magazine which focused on hrh capacity building as well as collaborative work and providing guidelines as well as updates then we have moved into online platforms with digital media because physical meetings were not possible during the lockdown time period since february and every week we had webinars that was focusing on different different aspects of management of covid and collaboration was the key and our theme was the community engagement and empowerment that is so important because when it comes to prevention we have to empower the community therefore we had a series of webinars discussing with different different stakeholders from many specialties not only medical for example law enforcement and maybe microbiology infectious diseases transport communication so on and so forth and based on these webinars we came out with set of guidelines related to different areas school education medical education hospitality industry so on and so forth and there were several newspaper articles discussing on these issues for example the future of medical education how we can adapt to new normal again very important area when you think about the development of the human resources and all these areas slme has taken a very leading and very prominent role our medical congress as you know this year most of the international conferences are not held because of the covid situation but we decided to go ahead with our 133rd anniversary congress which is which has been very conventional and traditional but this time the focus of the conference was on covid-19 and quality enhancement of healthcare beyond covid-19 because our idea is to move beyond covid-19 and move into new normal and our responsibility is capacity building of health professionals therefore our annual conference was focusing on covid-19 was held as a online as well as face to face conference and lot of focus on health innovations and solutions for covid-19 as well as capacity building again very well attended with very high technical quality and all the aspects of the traditional conference including the inauguration keynote all the symposia and the orations they were all there and not missing the social events that was on the online platform which was ended as a success so this was considered as a academic conference in the new normal again very important in the context that we are discussing today that this is about capacity building of health professionals during the covid-19 and beyond and we have gone a long way using the electronic media our web page focusing on capacity building with the cpd portal that is again providing lot of information again working in collaboration with world health organization and world bank on covid-19 and through the not only conventional cpd but we have been using social media very extensively related to capacity building of covid-19 using the top experts and similarly the twitter as well as youtube with several health education videos on prevention and management of covid-19 aiming at both doctors as well as general public and you can see there was extensive media presence because we made the maximum use and reach towards media to make sure that our message goes through and during this time period there was a important landmark in the country the national elections initially the government was not sure whether to go ahead with the elections but again the national elections committee they sought the support of the sri lanka medical association and we managed to plan a election process that is completely free of covid infection and sri lanka became the first country in the south asia and also the second country after south korea to conduct a well organized covid free elections so this again highlights the role of national medical association in working at national level and we have been working in work very close collaboration at the top level 
and very recently we met the president of the country, His Excellency Gotabe Rajapakshe, and discussed with him the work that has been done so far by the Sri Lanka Medical Association and the way forward. Basically, what I want to highlight is the importance of the preventive approach, the collaborative approach, because in that way, we will be able to control the situation. Why Sri Lanka has been successful in controlling was because of the very strong focus on public health approach. Because what happens is, if the prevention hasn't happened, the situation will definitely will go out of control and the limited resources that we have related to the human resources and the infrastructure will not be adequate or enough if the situation goes into a vicious cycle. Therefore, the key message is controlling prevention is very important. Therefore, capacity building of health options as well as the community is very important. What we want to highlight is a 3T, trace, test, treat approach and the 3C approach, which has been proven to be successful and would be a very worthwhile case study for many countries as well. Again, I would like to conclude by saying, in one hand, COVID was considered as a blessing in disguise because that has taught us the importance of public health and how successful the public health approach and the value of the new normal. Thank you very much.